Are you ready to unlock the secrets of Chican Money Flow? In this video, I'm going to show you what the Chican Money Flow Indicator measures, how it works, and a strategy that you can use today. That's coming up. <music> Hi traders, Douglas here. We're about to get into the Chican Money Flow Indicator, but first, I need you to punch that like button. Hello traders, Douglas here. We're going to get right into the Chican Money Flow Indicator, and I promised you at the beginning of this video, we were going to go over what this thing measures, how it works, and then a strategy that you can use or at least play with to see if it could work for you. All right, so let's get straight to it. Let's get into what the Chiken Money Flow measures. Okay, now a great description of this is over on fidelity.com. So we're just going to read a quick paragraph and then I'll sum it up for you. It says the Chiken Money Flow or the CMF developed by Mark Chiken is a volume weighted average of accumulation and distribution over a specified period. Now think of that as like buying pressure and selling pressure, okay? The standard CMF period is 21 days. Now this is important. This indicator was originally done as like a daily indicator, okay? So it's measuring out 21 days, but since we're day traders and we need this intraday, it's going to be measuring 21 bars back, not days back. The principle behind the Chiken money flow is the nearer the closing price is to the high, the more accumulation has taken place, and the nearer the closing price is to the low, the more distribution has taken place. So, if the price action is consistently above the bar's midpoint on increasing volume, the Chiken money flow will be positive. Conversely, if the price action consistently closes below the bar's midpoint on increasing volume, the Chiken money flow will be negative. Now, to make this all easy and to simplify it as much as possible, the Chiken money flow is basically looking at bullish bars and bearish bars and adjusting itself up or down based on how many of those bars are piling up. All right, so if you're getting in a bunch of bullish bars, the Chiken money flow is going to flow up. If you're getting a bunch of bearish bars, it's going to flow down, all right? That's the easiest way to think about it. Uh, there is a formula for this. If you want to find that formula, Fidelity has it. Uh, multiple other places have it if you want to get into the math of it all. But we're going to spare you that today. Let's get right over into the indicator. So you've got the Chiken Money Flow down here. This is on TradingView. Uh, NinjaTrader has it. I, it's very common. Most, most platforms will probably have this uh, indicator. And the basics is it'll have a zero line and you can see that here. And if the flow is above the zero line, you're looking bullish. And if the flow is below the bearish line, you're looking bearish. You're looking for shorts. All right. And of course, the higher it is above the zero line, the stronger it is, you know, the lower it is below the zero line, the weaker it is. Uh, very, very simple. I mean, you basically understand it already. There's not much else to go over. So let's get into the fun stuff. Let's go for a strategy. Now I put this strategy together. Uh, it's not like I've implemented this in real time. So I would love to see somebody uh, back test this or use this for like a week and leave it in the comments below and see what you think about it. But it seemed to uh, be fairly, fairly decent as far as uh, as far as indicators go. Okay, so I I put this on a one minute chart. We're looking at the ES, the E mini, the E mini, and uh, and then I put it on a Heiken Ashi bar. And since the Chaiken money flow is measuring like bullish bars compared to bearish bars, uh, what better way to look at that than Heiken Ashi, which is kind of uh, it's it's very easy to see the green versus the red, right? It smooths it out absolutely beautifully. So that's why I put Heiken Ashi on there. If you want regular candlesticks, use regular candlesticks. No big deal. And then we put this 21 day EMA on here. Why? Well, it was measuring 21 bars back. So it makes sense. We'll use a 21 day EMA. Why not? All right. So the basics of this strategy is going to be simple. If in this situation right here, you've got price moving up and the hike and excuse me, and the Chiken money flow is above the zero line. So it's signaling bullish, right? 
and then you get a pullback to the EMA where it gets price gets hung up on the EMA and the money flow stays bullish. And then you get one of these green bars, these green hike and ashy bars, a bullish bar. You're going to take it long. All right. However, if it's crossing over very easy like this, there was no green bars when it crossed over. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to hold the trade. If it's going above, you're not going to do anything. And by hold to trade, I mean, you don't trade. You're not taking it. You're not taking an entry here. And then you get quite a bit of that up here, but let's get into it. Uh, we'll, we'll do a couple days. This day is going to look pretty good. And then the day before this is a little more difficult. All right. So like, like everything in trading, nothing remains the same. Those damn days change all the time, right? Situations are always changing. Scenarios are always, always in flux. Okay. So we're going to start about 830. Uh, there's no trade here. It, it goes price goes right through that 21 day EMA. But as you can see, the uh, money flow was bearish. So it's giving you a clue that perhaps you shouldn't be going long here. And it flows right down. And then we start moving up. And the money flow is moving up with it. And it moves past that EMA and then comes back to the EMA. Now we're hanging around the EMA. We're hanging around. And the money flow is bullish. So you could have taken along perhaps here. You could have taken along here. In either way, you would have been fine. You would have got quite a decent move out of it. And then, but price crosses over the bar, crosses over the bar, crosses over, crosses over the EMA, excuse me, and crosses over. So you miss any trades in there that you think you could have taken. Uh, important, you, you can't catch every move, obviously. The game, name of the game and trading is, is waiting and finding your trade that fits your strategy. So if you don't have the discipline to do that, nothing's going to work for you. Doesn't matter if you were given the best system on earth by the best trader on earth. If you don't have the discipline to wait for your setup, you're going to fail. So let's follow this down. Uh, it comes back and we start hanging up in the EMA right here. And what do you know? The money flow is negative. So you could have taken maybe that there. You could have taken it there. You could have taken it there. You could have taken it there. Multiple places you could have got in. You never would have been in danger at any point in time. And you catch a fat move. It comes back. Uh, you could probably, that's close enough. You know, if you're not still hanging on to that runner or something like that, maybe you get back in here, money flow is still way down. It's made no indication that it's trying to cross above that zero line. So you might've taken that trade too. That would have been another great one. Then we cross above, no problem. Cross below, no problem. So there's no trades there. Crosses above again. And then it gets hung up here and money flow is positive. So you could take possibly along here, possibly along here. You might have got burned on this one, depending on how far your targets are. Uh, you're not going to win every time, of course. And I don't expect any strategy to show you a 100% winner. If it does, they're lying to you. So you probably would have lost in there if you took that. Maybe a scalper would have been fine. There's not much trades in there. Uh, right here, you probably would have got out on that one. I will call that one a potential winner. It moves at least a decent amount. And then you come back up and this is where indicators really can screw you. So if you were thinking this was hanging around, I mean, the pullback is kind of gone, right? We've already crossed above that EMA and you can see there's a range, but that's easy to say in hindsight. So if you think it's hung up here and looking, looking um, uh, bearish, you might've lost here. The line is very close to that zero line though. So who knows? Win or lose in there? I don't know. Price comes down, comes back, comes back. Doesn't quite get to the EMA either time. Does get to here. Is below the zero line. Take that short. Nice big move. Same thing here. You got multiple chances without much risk. Do great there. Pulls back, goes through. And... Uh, I don't know if you would have considered that enough of a pullback. There's possibility here and here and then again through here, but that's pretty much the day is over at that point. All right. So all in all, not terrible, not terrible. Even if you're trading at 50% on this, uh, most of your winners should be bigger than your losers. Cause if it starts closing above that, 
that EMA, you're, you need to get out. Don't let it travel back forever. So let's go back to the day before. That was the 20th. Let's go back to the 19th, because the 19th was a little more wild. It wasn't quite as trendy. So on the 19th, start again around 8.30. No chance there. Flies up through there. I mean, those are two huge moves you didn't get any chance to get into. But you don't need every move. You just need your move, and here you go. Money flow is bullish. Wonderful, wonderful tips off the EMA. I mean, that, that's that's not even a question right there. There's, you know, it's not like halfway going through it. So you shouldn't be too scared there. You can go along, get out, of course, before that top again. Flies right through there, so you wouldn't have taken a trade there or there or there or there. Didn't stop anywhere in the EMA. See, this is a wild day, man. You miss all these giant moves. So it flies up again. You're going to lose right here. It pulls back. It's getting hung up, clearly hung up on the EMA. Money flow is bullish. You go long, you're definitely lost there. Flies down, comes back, tips off this EMA. It's bearish. You might have taken a short there. You might have taken a short there. Those are two small ones. No chance to trade. No chance to trade, no chance, no chance, no chance, no chance. And then it comes up through here, no chance, no chance, no chance. And then right here, comes back to the EMA, is getting hung up, gives you some nice bullish bars, money flow is bullish, so you take the long there. So as you can see, it depends, of course, as every indicator and as every strategy does, it depends on what kind of price action is going on throughout the day. So I'm not saying this uh, particular strategy is, is going to make you a millionaire or anything, but it is something to look at. I actually uh, was kind of surprised at how much I, uh, I liked the money flow. I thought it would be uh, completely useless, but it does give you a pretty good idea of... of of how things are flowing if, if you're going to be getting maybe a, a bearish move soon or a bullish move soon. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see it wasn't complete trash. Um, now you just have to see if it'll work with your strategy and your life at all. And if it does, let me know in the comments below. And if it doesn't, Hey, let me know too. And if you've made it to this point in the video, you have a moral obligation, sir or woman, ma'am to subscribe, subscribe, stick with me and we'll keep on keeping on, guys. All right, that's it. I'm out.